Hello everyone, so my name is Northwest Fishkey Bank and since today I have no other videos uh, or no news this week except I may be uploading the Hachi video instead I have to film that because instead of making like a story video I'm going to just make it a video on like how living with a Jindo over the past year like what it's been like and other things like that but today for this update we have some mixed news as in we have some good news about where the UNS 60U is and a new quarantine tank that I set up for some extremely special fish and then the bad news consists of stuff like some of the new additions so let's start with the bad news first just so we can get out of the way unfortunately the yellow white and black crinoid squat lobster has passed away I'm not 100% sure why but one thing I do uh, suspect is possibly hunger because he didn't really uh, accept food. Uh, I tried two different methods. I tried putting some in the water column so that he could kind of catch it out of uh, the, the water column while he was just sitting on the rock. And then the other way I tried was to uh, spot feed him with uh, some tweezers, but he never really took any. And I think he might have starved to death, which is very unfortunate because, again, I don't know exactly how he died or what caused its death, but this is basically the risk you take every time when you get something from the wild you don't know their exact age or what kind of conditions they could have uh the divers den stuff is uh held there for about two weeks and they do look over them but i'm not exactly sure what ended up uh killing uh him but my main uh cause of concern is possibly old age uh because the crinoid squat lobsters only live for a couple years or it could have just been some underlying health condition that they didn't see uh, which caused him to reject food but I guess the good news that is coming out of this situation is because I, is uh, that I am getting a refund I believe uh, I just submitted a uh, 7 day guarantee form and today is the 7th day so just at the nick of time but really unfortunate that he ended up passing uh, this fast and this soon uh, which is, it sounds even sad when I get into the next uh, part of the video uh, but I really hope to see another one again and actually have it in the main display where it is an established environment and hopefully they can become accustomed to there. But that's basically all the bits of bad news and I guess we should lighten up the mood with some better updates on what new tank setups are to come. So first of all I should get off uh, with the UNS 60U and the place I bought the tank from uh, Aqualab Aquaria I sent them a message I think it was Wednesday night and they got back to me with uh, Thursday morning and basically what happened is the UNS 60U's end up coming a little later than all the other UNS tanks so they actually just got a pallet uh, yesterday of the UNS 60U's and I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to show this message if I just blur out some stuff but they ended up getting the pallet of UNS 60s yesterday. Uh, I'm supposedly 11th in queue, so I'm the 11th person waiting uh, for the UNS 60U. So they said that I should be getting my order within uh, this pallet, but they'll update if anything goes wrong, which I very really appreciate that. But this means we should be getting the UNS 60U up and going soon once the tank arrives. I do have the stand ready. Uh, I just built a P, uh, pre made, or not a pre made, a DIY uh, stand out of 2x4s, and I painted it with some dry lock uh, waterproof paint. And I only need uh, another piece of wood to cover the top uh, just for some extra support, and that's about it. But possibly as soon as next week we might be having uh the 60u but it'll take a little longer for me to get the video out on that because that video is going to be pretty heavily edited and it's going to be really awesome since it's going to be like a cinematic setup but the other setup i'm planning on doing uh not so much right now this is more maybe to maybe late april is i'm going to be turning an old 20 gallon that i have in uh storage to a hillstream tank and this is to serve as the permanent home slash a breathing ground for my group of seven oh whoops sorry about that a group of seven rainbow shiners i have and if you're running on update on those yes they are still alive and they are still doing well they're still young so they're not as colorful but hopefully once they move into this new setup and they have a lot of water flow uh wood rocks some plants i that's not really gonna make a difference but in this new setup they should be really custom to it and hopefully we can get some breathing going on during the summer and speaking of that in this tank i'm not exactly sure what other fish i want to have in here with them 
Uh, if I do want to have any other fish in there with them, since 7 Rainbow Shiners and the 20 gone, it's, in my mind, a little overstocked. Well, not overstocked, but it's getting to a point where it's probably going to be maximum uh, fully stocked. Uh, but other fish I'm considering are Hillstream Loaches, uh, the Blue Stiphonon Gobies, or possibly another U.S. native fish, because I've seen some... Uh, new US native fish uh, that I've never seen before and I found a place that I can get them from so I'm considering on working uh, with some other US native fish such as the bluefin killies or the rainwater killies because those two stand out the most in my mind as something that will catch people's eyes and they also stay pretty small so that's a double feature of them. But now moving on to the quarantine tank, this is basically just, it's actually right on my desk next to the uh, Omni-Line jellyfish tank, which is actually where I'm recording this, but this is basically just an Aquion uh, 10 gallon tank that I got a couple days ago. I think they're still having a sale right now for 50% off uh, tanks from 5 to 40 gallons, so basically just like a dollar per gallon sale, uh, but it's half price, I guess. But this is just $10 right now, so if you're looking for a new 10 gallon tank, I suggest going to Pekka right now, but... It's just running an Aquion uh, 10 gallon hang on the back filter and an Awaze heater is coming for this as well. As well as some PVC pipes I'm going to be picking up this weekend along with the final piece of wood for the UNS uh, 60U stand. But this tank is going to be housing some extremely special fish. I'm not going to, I'm not sure if I'll say them right now uh, because I'm not make, going to make any promises on whether I'm actually going to be getting them. Uh, because the time I'm ordering them is, I think, in a week and a half. So the time varies within if I can actually get those fish, uh, depending on whether they're on the list or not. But if everything goes to plan, I should be getting about 12 to 14 extremely rare gobies uh, split between two species. And these are rarely ever seen in the U.S. anymore, especially with... Um, I believe livestock flights uh, from Japan to the US is still closed, uh, which is what the uh, Madaka uh, seller told me. The, the, the certain fish are really hard to get. Uh, they were already extremely rare to begin with, but now with kind of flights still being uh, closed, it's just extremely harder to get. And these are exceptionally good nano fish, although you do want to have them in groups. Uh, they both go really well together. They both have extremely striking colors. And all 12 to 14 will be going in the UNS 6U, which 12 to 14 fish in a 20 gallon tank does sound overstocked. But considering it's a macroalgae tank, these are one to one and a half inch gobies. Uh, and their bioload is almost non existent. They'll make a perfect match in this tank. And by the way, I do have to change up my scape for the 6U just to accommodate these fish on where they're found from so that is the link that i'm going to to try and hopefully successfully keep them and breed them since i'm just gonna say that the price range for these fish uh one of them was going for uh 30 to 60 dollars each uh when they're seen is what someone said and then another person in a different thread has said that the other species was going for about 70 dollars a fish and that was the one that is the most commonly found in the hobby and when i say most common You'll probably see it within a couple of specimens, maybe every few years if we end up getting some. But I am planning on getting six of one species and then six of the other. So hopefully if everyone makes it through quarantine or more uh, more specifically, if everyone makes it from the Philippines to here and through quarantine and then hopefully sells into the UNS 6 u hopefully we should see some breathing going on. And I'm going to be documenting my experiences with these fish since... We don't know a ton about these guys since they're so ever rarely seen in the U.S. And hopefully I can make some care guides, some tips on these fish, and hopefully a couple breeding videos if they do end up working out. But with that, it that's basically all I have for today. Really short and sweet, but a lot of awesome stuff coming within the next couple of weeks. So I hope everyone enjoys this weekend since this is going to be uploading on Friday. And my name is Northwest Fishkeeping, signing out. Hold on, this video is only 9 minutes. Why is it now, I think, an additional 1.30? I, I haven't checked yet. This is editing uh, Northwest Fishkeeping. But a recent update as of just today as I'm recording this is that, unfortunately, the jellyfish that I was going after for the Omni 9 have still not bred yet after three months. And uh, I've been thinking of waiting uh, for another, I think... I'm not exactly sure how long it will take them to breed. 
but after it takes a lot uh, another time to breathe and then they have to wait for the polyps to grow into actual jellyfish and then those baby jellyfish have to grow up into a reasonable size before they sell them so this time for the omnidine nine i'm actually going with another easy species uh that are good for beginners uh they're not blue jellyfish or the bay nettles like i mentioned in the earlier video uh but they are they get decently sized uh they're good for you know medium sized tanks like the omnidine nine but when they get bigger they get extremely attractive just like the uh, other jellyfish uh that i was going after these guys when they get to adult size they get these really awesome kind of like reddish maroon colors uh depending on where you buy them from uh the jellyfish warehouse they uh produce a strain that has more maroon and red in them so that's really awesome but this is going to be a really awesome species uh does good at room temperature uh really easy to feed and really hardy so make sure to look out for that video within maybe the next month or so since i have to save up more money but since I've been talking to Travis for, uh, I think, a couple months at this point, he's giving me a $30 discount off each jellyfish, and I'm getting two. And considering the price of them, that's huge, and i like to thank Travis. But yeah, make sure to look out for that video, and this is actually the end of this video. So I hope you enjoyed everything. Please consider subscribing and liking the video if you did enjoy this, and hopefully you'll stay around for the new content to come. And with that, it, my name is Northwest Fishkeeping, signing out.